This week was probably the biggest week in the history of Web3 Gaming, and it's all because of a game called Off the Grid. Off the Grid is winning. There's no longer any debate about it at all. And in a minute, we'll explain why they're so far ahead of any other game in the entire industry. But it also raises the question of if any game in the Web3 industry could possibly catch up to this level of hype. I think so. Let's talk about it. Welcome to Late Game Crypto. My name is Josh, and I'm here to help you find digital liberty in the complex world of crypto. Remember that anything you hear in any of my videos is not to be taken as financial advice. Do your own research and own your own decisions. I have been saying for a long time now that Web3 Gaming is going to lead this next bull market because it's easy for people to understand. There is an existing market for it that is growing faster than any other form of entertainment on the planet, and blockchain does real things to solve problems in this industry. The events of last week proved that I wasn't crazy because the Twitch streamer with the number one most followers in the world spent all week last week streaming a Web3 game. You may have heard of Ninja before. If not, your kids probably have. But he teamed up with another popular streamer by the name of Tim the Tatman and Skump, who is a Call of Duty world champion. They all streamed off the grid all week last week. These guys have a combined follower count of 25 million followers across all of their primary social media accounts. So this was not by any means some false hype that's just coming from some crypto bro nonsense. At one point, it was the fourth most watched category on Twitch. It was the number one most downloaded free to play game on the Epic Game Store, and even Forbes went and wrote an article about it. This is huge no matter which way you look at it, because for the first time in the history of the industry, a Web3 game was showing demonstrably comparable interest to any other traditional top level game. With the level of success that Off The Grid is seeing that is so far ahead of any other Web3 game in the industry, it raises the question of, is anybody ever going to be able to catch up to this level of success? Why is it that up to this point in the industry, we haven't seen any game, popular or not, reach this level of completion with this level of quality brought to the table? I'm going to go ahead and break down for you why Off The Grid has seen such unreasonable levels of success ahead of any other Web3 game in the industry, and why a game called Cornucopius shares some core qualities that positions itself to do the same thing. One of the biggest advantages that Off The Grid brought to the market is, unsurprisingly, money. The company behind this game that goes by the name Godzilla Games raised $125 million to build off the grid, which to the best of my knowledge is the most money raised by any other Web3 game. The next biggest competitors are titles like Alluvium, which raised something in the ballpark of $60 million, titles like Shrapnel, which raised somewhere around the ballpark of $38 million, and Wilder Worlds, which raised $36 million. I, these are all kind of ballparks because some of that information is private, but these are relatively accurate numbers. So as you can tangibly see, there is a pretty considerable difference between what Off The Grid has been able to afford compared to what any other major Web3 gaming title has been able to afford. But it's not just about the money. Godzilla Games was also able to bring a considerable level of industry talent to the table. I mean, naturally, yes, $125 million enables you to afford a relatively substantial team which Godzilla Games did exactly that because they've got a pretty sizable team, something in the ballpark of about 300 employees behind them. But the, the core team is really what I want to focus on here. The core team behind Off The Grid is composed more of gaming professionals than crypto professionals, which is partly why they were able to secure so much funding because they had pre-existing relationships with VCs that actually specialize in gaming. 
I mean, these guys have people that worked on Halo and Far Cry, Destiny, Battlefield, and so many other major gaming titles that any gamer would recognize in the industry. So I hope it's starting to make sense why Off The Grid was able to accomplish such a major breakout success after the events of last week, because there's another game that is positioned very similarly, and it's called Cornucopius, and it has a very similar story to Off The Grid on a much smaller scale. Cornucopius has raised, I want to say, a little less than $20 million between NFT sales and token sales, but the difference between Cornucopius and the rest of the industry is that most of that came entirely from the community. Very little of it came from VC investors, and I'm talking like less than 5% here. This funding has allowed Cornucopius up to this point to build a 50-person team, and a vast majority of those resources have gone to game development, which I'll, I'll dive a little bit deeper into in just a minute. Despite that massive gap in budget, not just with Off The Grid, but a lot of other major gaming titles, Cornucopius has been able to build a huge in-game universe. It might be the largest playable in-game universe in Web3 right now, and it has completely original artwork, just like Off The Grid, with such a high quality of graphics that it pushes the boundaries in the industry of gaming as a whole, not just Web3. The reason that Cornucopius has been able to deliver a level of productivity that is so efficient is because, like Off The Grid, Cornucopius is mostly composed of gaming professionals. And a lot of the expertise that backs Cornucopius comes from people that have worked on titles like New World and Battlefield and League of Legends and Star Citizen and Farmville and so many more. And on top of that, the game director behind Cornucopius was one of a handful of people that got early access to the Unreal Engine 5 tools, which gave Cornucopius a huge head start in learning how to navigate the tools of the most advanced game engine on the planet. There is a reason that Cornucopius delivers such unreasonably phenomenal art. There aren't a lot of games that are known for the environmental art that they bring to the table, whether we're talking about traditional games or crypto games, but Cornucopius is definitely gonna be one of them. Now, since Cornucopius has dedicated such a large amount of its budget towards the game development side of the company, and this is obviously in an effort to produce a more complete product to actually bring to the market, Cornucopius actually hasn't dedicated a ton of resources towards marketing yet. Most of you guys already know that I work for Cornucopius, so there's a little bit of things that I can provide some insights on. For example, those of you that follow the project pretty closely probably already know that Cornucopius is starting to enter a phase where they can start putting more resources into the marketing side of things. But what you might not know is that in the past month alone, we've secured multiple partnerships that will deliver a ridiculous amount of value to Cornucopius in the form of marketing. I can't really say much more than that, but be sure to follow Cornucopius on all their social media channels so that you can get the first word of when those things do drop. Cornucopius has been forced to be efficient with the budget that they have because they don't have a $100 million plus budget to onboard top level industry talent and run top tier marketing campaigns at the same time. But... That doesn't mean that they're not prepared to deliver a comparable level of exposure to the industry compared to what we saw out of Off The Grid last week. It's kind of been a few years in the making, but Cornucopius may or may not have a contact with somebody that has a following that is multiple times the size of ninjas. But that's all I'm going to say on that one. The point that I'm making here is that Cornucopius has plenty of potential to be a major player in Web3 Gaming, and that's worth looking into in depth if you haven't already. It's just that Cornucopius is taking a more efficient strategic route than Off The Grid is. Let's go ahead and take a step back here and be a little bit more grounded about this approach, because there are some key differences to take note of. 
Off the Grid is a battle royale shooter, and Cornucopius is an open world adventure multiplayer game, both of which are very different genres in the industry of gaming, and they act pretty differently when it comes to uh, how users interact with them on the market. The population of gamers that play shooter games is the largest population of gamers in the industry of gaming. So new shooter games do tend to see really fast growth and really high revenue in a short amount of time, which is why this particular genre is so ridiculously competitive. Open world RPGs, on the other hand, tend to have higher rates of retention, longer hours of playtime, and better community support because of the formation of things like organized guilds and opportunities for user-generated content. So, Cornucopius may not have some explosive breakout event like what Off the Grid had. I mean, it might. That's still plenty possible. But... It is more reliable that Cornucopius will have consistent growth over a longer period of time. And also, Cornucopius has the unique advantage of being able to tap into kind of a wider range of audiences of people who call themselves gamers, because the amount of gameplay that Cornucopius is going to be putting into their game is going to be much more diverse. The size of their in-game universe by the end of their long-term roadmap, is anticipated to be at least 25 times the size of the in-game universe of GTA V. And all of that in-game space is meant to be filled with different gameplay elements to serve different people that call themselves gamers. Many of those gameplay elements will include things like mining and fishing and crafting and racing and PvP or PvE elements and many more as this game evolves into the future. The intention is to have something for anybody that calls themselves a gamer. They'll be able to come into the Cornucopius universe and feel like there is something that interests them. The key similarity between Cornucopius and Off the Grid is, is what got me so juiced about what Off the Grid was able to accomplish this week. Because the biggest common element between both of these games is without a doubt the free to play business model. Both of these games take this sort of blockchain optional approach where the game assets can exist just within the game, but the more premium assets can be turned into NFTs, but they don't have to. This is the business model that is going to be most accessible to traditional gamers in the future of Web3 Gaming, and it enables true digital ownership for users. Traditional gamers are not going to try game titles that they've never heard of before, especially not Web3 games that have some sort of pay-to-play element to them, at least not in this stage of the market, which is why free-to-play games are going to be the ones that you want to pay most attention to in the foreseeable future of this industry. Which Web3 games are on your radar. Let me know down in the comments section below or just leave a corn emoji for the engagement. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss any of my Cardano-based content every Tuesday and Thursday. As always, remember never to invest more than what you can afford to lose. Learn as much as you can about this space and play for the late game. Thanks so much for watching.